Hi everybody, welcome to a new tutorial from Sound for More. It's Leo speaking. In today's tutorial, we're going to start the journey to how um use Obsidian, this synth which is inside Nano Studio 2. And if you were not aware, yes, you have a fantastic synth inside the Nano Studio 2. If you have missed it, well, reconsider the Nano Studio 2 just for the synth because it has unique sound. So let's start. And before I forget, actually, just please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, as it helps with growing the channel itself. So let's click on the plus sign here. Let's add a default track. Um, for Obsidian, as it says here. Let's double click on it. And this is the first page of the Obsidian synth. It is, you can see here, selected there. And it is the performance page because you have a number of controls which you can use to change your performance. You have other pages, the patch page where you can select banks, tags, and patches. Your edit page where you can change your settings for your synth. And you have your modulation and effects page as well. So back to the performance page, uh, actually a quite a nice trick. If you click again on the performance um, page image, it goes back to the previous page that you visited, which is really nice. So if you click edit and you go back to the performance, click again performance, go back, it goes back to edit as it remembers the last one, which is a really nice trick. Now <clears throat> we are using a default settings. So that means I have a sawtooth. <laughs> Um, waveform. Okay, there it is. But you have others as well. You have a sign, really nice as a sound, really pure as the, it says here, type analog. Let's listen to the triangle. Really, really nice. So let's open up this one, this lock, which will enable you to uh, go up an octave or go down an octave. Really, really nice. So let's stick to, why not, that triangle we go up uh, an octave. Now, let's go back to the performance page. So here you can um, move up a patch or down a patch. Okay, so let's move up, 1984. Really nice, let's go up again. Really, really nice, and so on and so forth. And of course, I'm going through the patches here. Now, if you want to reinitialize the patch under the patch page, click the hamburger menu and select init. And then you go back to the default. Okay, <clears throat> so here you have uh, a different types of views for the performance page. This one is the standard one where you have the keyboard and also some of the controls. You can also have two keyboards up and down. Now, when you are in this view, and um, let's close this one, you just have to remember that if you go up and down using this control, it will uh, go up and down an octave for both keyboards, not isolated. However, in this view, as well in uh, the control views, okay, you have this icon pointing down for both keyboards in this case. If you click on that in open selection for transpose, velocity and scale, and the same for the keyboard below. Now, if you go back to the uh, first view with the controls, you can still do that. And you can see here, the other, I still have it open for transpose velocity and scale. Okay, and I can close it like that. So let's go back to the two keyboard views. Now let's open up this one as well for the keyboard below. You have a um, selection to scroll, so you can scroll the keyboard left and right, really nice. And you can do that independently with the keyboard above. You can transpose up and down. So let's try. Or you can click it off and then click the exit to exit. And again, you can do independently for both keyboards. The same for velocity. Here in this case, it's set to a fixed velocity 64. You can set it to 100 or maximum 127. Or you can have it by touch. So higher is louder. And as I move up or down the key, it gets lower. Okay, let's set it to 64 and let's click uh, the X to exit. You can also set um, different scale and these are really like as a functionality. You click on it and you can say I have minor scale here 
and on the top I have a minor pentatonic. So you can have different scales, which is really nice. Really, really nice. And of course you can reset it to off for both to go back to default and you click on the X to close it and further close that little menu. Now, you have also an additional view here, which is full view of one keyboard. In this case, you don't have the you don't have the option here to open and close the different option for scroll, transport, velocity, and scale. Now, let's continue with our explanation. Let's go back to the performance view. Here, you have your usual pitch bend, your pitch bend, as it normally is for any keyboard. So here, you have a number of knobs which you can customize. And you have already selected the first two for attack and release, which is your normal attack in your ADSR and the normal release for ADSR. So, increasing the attack or in increasing the release. Okay, really straightforward. Now, let's change that down to, why not, down to zero. The other thing you notice is it says the name there, you click on it, it tells you also the percentage. And of course you can double click to go back to uh, the original value, which is really nice. Here on the right hand side, you have a selection for, in this case, cut off and resonant, okay. Doesn't feel like you're changing much on cut off. And the reason is because you need to go to edit and set your cut off to a different level. In this case, let's try again. Okay, so remember when you assign two uh, different parameters to um, two controls, you need to really check what uh, is the current value of those controls. Now you can customize further this knob. So you click on the hamburger menu here and you can see blue highlighted control. So you can just say, hey, on number three, I click on it, and here it shows you a view of what you have assigned uh, on different knobs. It is your macro tools window. You can initialize them. You can swap them for a different one. You can rename them, or you can add a destination, which is what we are going to do now. So we click on add destination. Now it says select a modulation destination. And how do you do that? Well, let's go to the edit you, so page, sorry, and you can see highlighted in blue settings you can use. In this case, I'm going to go to voice and I'm going to select detune. And as you can see, it says now voice and detune. Now, nothing happens in terms of changing. And that is because I have not set unison to multiple voices. So the detune does have a great effect without different multiple voices. Really, really nice. So let's go back to the edit page, the first oscillator. Let's set these to triangle. Really, really nice, as you can hear. And of course, you can continue in this way. So you can say, I want to select something different for knob four. So you go to the hamburger menu, select the knob four, add the destination. Let's go to the edit page. Let's go to voice again and select stereo for stereo panning. So let's try. So hopefully if you have headphones, you can hear the difference. Really, really, really nice. And you can see, you can hear how quickly you can create uh, something. Let's go to modulation effects and let's add uh, some reverb as well. Really nice. And why not? Let's go and customize knob five, add the destination. Let's go to the modulation effect and select mix. Okay, let's try. So I'm, in this case, I'm using knob five to change the mix of reverb with the original sound. So you can see how useful it is to change the controls in the performance page of Obsidian. Let's try one more. So let's customize knob six. Let's add the destination. Let's, let's select the size. Really, really, really 
nice and powerful. So hopefully this is just um, uh, the beginning on how to use Obsidian and hopefully you found, you found it useful. So we will continue with the next tutorial to explore the patch uh, page, but also more interestingly how all the different controls work in the edit and modulation effect pages. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next video. Bye.